The US is broke. Murders, they're on the rise. And healthcare workers are getting fired. Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sent a letter to congressional leaders that said the U.S. is nearly out of money. In that letter, Yellen said, we now estimate that the Treasury is likely to exhaust its extraordinary measures if Congress has not acted to raise or suspend the debt limit by October 18th. At that point, we expect the Treasury would be left with very limited resources that would be depleted quickly. It is uncertain whether we could continue to meet all of the nation's commitments after that date. So, if you're broke, you can feel better knowing you're not alone. So is America. Pretty soon, the U.S. might also be forced to start living off of ramen noodles, pirating all of its movies, and doing laundry at its mom's house. Yellen sent the letter after Republicans blocked a Senate bill that would fund the government at its current levels and suspend the debt ceiling. Republicans voted against the bill because they said Democrats and President Biden are spending too much. Even some Democrats think Democrats are spending too much. President Biden met this week with moderates in his own party to discuss a reconciliation bill that would lower the price of his $3.5 trillion Build Back Better plan. You know, I don't think this is fair to Biden. Why should any of us have to face the consequences of spending too much money and getting into debt? Besides, how was I supposed to not buy this motorized waterbed with a built-in PlayStation 5? Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi decoupled a stopgap bill to continue funding the government from a provision to raise the debt ceiling, to force Republicans to vote on the measure and avoid a government shutdown. But Republicans blocked it again. But just hours before the shutdown was to begin on Friday, both sides came together to pass a stopgap measure to fund the government through December 3rd. President Biden signed the bill saying the passage of this bill reminds us that bipartisan work is possible. Which sounds nice, unless you realize how little actually got done. Sure, there was no immediate shutdown on Friday, but there's still the matter of raising the debt ceiling. If the two parties can't agree on this by October 18th, the U.S. may default on its debt. Oh no. Does this mean that the U.S. will get its motorized waterbed with a built-in PlayStation 5 repossessed? Asking for a friend. Don't worry, America won't actually go bankrupt. It can just print more money. Sure, that could lead to inflation, but the good news is, if your money is worth less, you're more likely to become a millionaire. And who doesn't want that? And if you're thinking, well, at least we can still afford to go to the Dollar Tree, the Dollar Tree announced they're going to start selling items over a dollar. Thanks, inflation. Democrats and Republicans are digging their heels in and refuse to compromise, despite the damage it will do to American citizens. This whole government shutdown situation is confusing and frustrating, mainly because how can the government shut down if it wasn't even working in the first place? More after the break. Welcome back. Singer R. Kelly has been found guilty on eight counts of sex trafficking. You know it didn't look good for him when the only person who was defending R. Kelly was Bill Cosby. That's like if at your murder trial, the only person who stuck up for you was Ted Bundy. You're probably going to jail. Sentencing is scheduled for May of 2022. Until then, R. Kelly will be closely monitored as he's considered a flight risk, mainly because he believes he can fly. Kelly's sex trafficking charges are the most disturbing I've heard since the ones against that Prince fella. No, not that Prince. Prince Andrew. While R. Kelly will likely be going to prison, a lot of people in Los Angeles may soon be released from prison. The Los Angeles County District Attorney announced 58,000 marijuana convictions dating back as far as 30 years will be dismissed. In a statement, he said, Dismissing these convictions means the possibility of a better future to thousands of disenfranchised people who are receiving this long-needed relief. While I'm happy to hear these convictions are being overturned, considering how flammable California is, it might be best to keep an eye on anyone known for lighting up. Speaking of California fires, 
A woman was arrested for starting a wildfire in California that has burned thousands of acres and led to thousands of evacuations. How did she start the fire? Well, the woman was hiking to Canada when she allegedly started the fire while trying to boil water from a puddle. And here I thought I was a bad cook. At least I can say I've never burned down a forest while trying to make spaghetti. I only burned the spaghetti. They really need to make the instructions on the box more clear. If this woman had to start a forest fire, it's a shame she did it in California and not before making it to Canada. Because A, Canada could use the extra warmth, and B, Justin Trudeau could blame his blackface on all the ash from the fire. The fire is mostly contained now. While it was bad, it could have been worse. If this was another California gender reveal party, there might not have been any survivors. Speaking of a large number of deaths, what a fun transition that was. According to the FBI, homicides in the U.S. increased nearly 30% year over year in 2020. This marks the largest one-year jump in murders since the FBI began keeping records. James Allen Fox, a criminologist at Northeastern University in Boston, attributed this rise in murder to the COVID pandemic and people having too much free time on their hands. Yeah, because when I suddenly find myself with a few days off, the first thing I like to do is kick up my feet, catch up on my favorite Netflix series, and then go off my neighbors. Fox said this increase in murders likely isn't permanent, and the murder rate in America is still far lower than it was during the crack epidemic 30 plus years ago. That, that doesn't make me feel better. That's kind of like telling the people engulfed in the volcano of Pompeii, yeah, this is bad, but at least it's not as bad as when that meteor hit the earth and killed the dinosaurs. It doesn't help our current predicament. After the break, healthcare workers are being replaced. Welcome back. New York Governor Kathy Hochul signed an executive order that allows retired healthcare workers from other states and countries to administer COVID-19 tests and vaccines to patients in New York. This is amid a healthcare worker shortage, which was made worse by the healthcare vaccine mandate, which went into effect on Monday night in New York. Now, nurses and hospital staff that haven't had at least one dose of a COVID vaccine will no longer be allowed to work in the state. This executive order also allows medically trained National Guard troops to replace unvaccinated hospital workers. Military replacement for civilians. Sounds like a great precedent to set. After all, the military is involved in every aspect of life in utopias like North Korea, and look at how happy they are. We might need a lot of National Guardsmen to step in because a hospital in Syracuse, New York, suspended 122 health care workers that didn't comply with the vaccine mandate. And 175 health care workers in North Carolina were fired over it. But I say, why stop at just hospital staff? Let's get the military to replace everyone who refuses to be vaccinated. National Guard fast food employees would never mess up your meal since they're great at following orders. National Guard strippers. It doesn't matter what song you choose for them because the National Guard is always ready, always there. National Guard nanas. Your grandma won't get vaccinated? Then you're going to start receiving $5 checks for your birthday from Corporal Mima over here. And I bet the military is checking on my vaccination status to see if next week you'll be watching National Guard Uncovered. It isn't just unvaccinated hospital workers that are being replaced. A federal appeals panel ruled that New York City can impose vaccine mandates on teachers. And New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio wasted no time in doing so. Any adult working in our schools who's not yet vaccinated, you have till Friday, 5 o'clock. Uh, get vaccinated, single dose, you're done. Uh, get the second dose on time later on. But for, for the purpose of continuity, one dose by Friday, 5 o'clock, and you're in, come to work Monday. If you have not gotten that first dose by Friday, 5 o'clock, we will assume you are not coming to work on Monday and you will not be paid starting Monday. And we will fill your role with a substitute or an alternative uh, employee. Well, it's after 5 o'clock on Friday, so any teachers who haven't had at least one dose of a COVID vaccine won't be allowed to work starting Monday. Attorneys for teachers in the city said they'd take this case to the Supreme Court. But in the meantime, looks like we might start seeing National Guard teachers, which is rough for them because there's no natural disaster more difficult to deal with than third graders. The only job the military won't be able to replace is the military because Navy SEALs are now being told they won't be deployed if they're unvaccinated. Makes sense. 
You wouldn't want them spreading COVID to people they're about to covertly kill. It's best to just send these unvaccinated soldiers home and let the terrorists get away with whatever they're planning. That's the responsible thing to do. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.